thank you everybody for having me here today. I am delighted to come to events just like this. Um, as I was thinking uh, what I wanted to talk about on my drive over here, I began to think about how I got started. Uh, Ten years old, 1978, uh, my sixth grade teacher said, you know, I'm active in the Racine County Republican Party, and this is one who I had known for quite some time, and she said, you should come with me to a meeting. So back then, teachers could actually take kids in their car, and there wasn't worrying about uh, what's going to happen, and all those kind of things. So she took me to my first meeting, and I kind of got hooked. Because what I realized quickly was not that I was the mascot of our Republican Party, which I kind of was, because I was this kid who came to every event, but I quickly realized that there are wonderful people who are active in politics on our side of the aisle. I think that the people that you meet, uh, my wife was actually brought here from Idaho to work on George W. Bush's campaign. Uh, that's how we met, because I was the county chair. Um, I had an opportunity to be involved in student government. That's how I met Tommy Thompson. I got appointed to the Board of Regents. I had an opportunity to get involved with the Republican Party. That's how I got my first job out of college, where I was an aide for uh, then Representative Jim Landwig. Uh, his wife then took his seat, and then I took her seat. So uh, it's been quite an, quite an experience. I got elected to the county board in 1994 because my friend uh, from the Republican Party said, why don't you get involved in local county politics before you ever decide to run for something else? And at the time, our county board had 31 members. And our 31 members, there were three members of the, Re the Racine County Republican Party up to 31. Now, at the time, our county was about 50-50, so it was pretty marginal. So I decided my goal was going to be to go and elect conservatives to the county board. That we went out and we actually got our Racine County Party to agree that if you joined, they would help pay for your yard signs. We hired a graphic artist who was actually on retainer, and that graphic artist designed all of our literature, designed all of our yard signs, designed everything that we did, and it was all an in-kind contribution to the candidates. So that was 1994. 2004 when I left, we had shrunk the board from 31 down to 23, and we actually had 17 of the 23 members as dues-paying members of the Racine County Republican Party. Yeah. So, <laughs> and when I look and hear you discussing that you want to get involved in the county, um, that's the way that things are really going to change in Wisconsin. I have watched all across the board good people who maybe were involved in politics before they voted. They probably even watched the news. But I think what happened in 2008 really set something special to begin to begin. We saw all across the country people who hadn't really been actively involved decided to become um, Tea Party Patriots. That's the way I really look at it. A lot of people who were active in the party before, so they weren't just Tea Partiers. They were people who maybe were dormant. They were people who had run a small business or worked in a manufacturing company or maybe had been laid off. People who were moms, homemakers, and teachers, and all kinds of people who looked at the future of our state and the future of our country and said things have really got to be different if I'm going to be able to live in America where I really have the opportunity to grow up and have my opportunities. And boy, did things change. In the legislature, um, we went for, in the minority for the first time since 1994. We had always had some opportunity for control in government, really going all the way back to 1982, right after I started getting involved, I was 12. Republicans always had to say, we had Tommy Thompson. Even under Governor Doyle in the first term, we had the Republican Senate Assembly, we lost the Senate, then we finally lost the Assembly. So we got to show Wisconsin what it was like to have united Democratic control at not just the state level, but also the federal level. Taxes, spending, regulations. I met with some people today, um, and since there are no people here from the media, I won't... Uh, uh, actually, there are people that are okay. recording. Yeah. That's okay, then. I met with someone today. Um, uh, whose name I'm not going to mention now, um, <laughs> who is a very large employer in the state. And what they told me was that there were more regulations <coughs> promulgated in the first two years of the Obama administration there, than there were in the past two decades under both Democrats and Republicans at the national level. It had a chilling effect on business that we are still seeing today. We saw that in Wisconsin. Under Governor Doyle, we had everything from a global warming bill to increases in taxes and regulations all across the board. If you remember the last budget, we increased taxes on cell phones, we increased taxes on electricity, property taxes went through the roof, income tax increases happened, sales taxes in places <coughs> on RTA. We really put a huge wet blanket on our economy. Luckily, 2010 happened, and the voters of Wisconsin said, wait a minute, 
When we elected Democrats with Barack Obama, we thought you were going to change the direction of our state, but we thought it would be upward, not downward. And that's really what happened. So I am so proud that we have members of the legislature who kind of come <coughs> with that same spirit that the people in this room have. They're not doing it for the money. They're not doing it for some sort of fame, even though we had our fair share in the last six to eight months. Uh, they are doing it for all the right reasons, which is why when we had the opportunity to do big things, we have a freshman class of now 28 members. Uh, that's almost half of the Republicans that are in the legislature in the assembly right now. Half are brand new members, half are members who haven't even been there for all that long, all the way up to some who've been here almost a year. United is what I can say about this group. When the protesters came, they actually thought that through intimidation and through lies and innuendo, they would be able to break the spirit of people who were doing it for all the right reasons. And I gotta tell you, I have never been so proud of a group of people who stood together, not necessarily even knowing each other all that well, because this happened a month into where we were actually with the collective bargaining debate. When Governor Walker called us in and said, um, I am gonna make these changes to collective bargaining, as somebody who has always been a supporter of right to work, um, I have to admit I, I was even a little shocked myself because this went further than right to work. Went further for public employees. But it was what was necessary. Now, many of the people who won their elections in 2010 did so in districts that hadn't voted for a Republican in quite some time. The natural inclination for most politicians is what? Anybody want to guess? Yep, Self-preservation. That is the natural inclination of most elected officials, be they on the city council all the way up to the president. So to see a group of people who said, you know what, we didn't come here to get reelected. We didn't come here for power or glory. We're gonna come here to make a difference and if it means we go back to our other jobs two years from now, that's God's plan. So we took votes that if you would have told me when I was elected in 2004, we would be taken, I would have said you were smoking an illegal substance. <laughs> uh, because I would have never guessed that we would have done things like repealing taxpayer funding for campaigns, which is what we did in the last budget. That we would take and get rid of um, the collective bargaining privileges, which really locked in so many costs for local governments that I had seen as chair of the Finance and Personnel Committee on our county board. That we would have people who would take tough votes that might mean they don't get to come back. Now, having spent a lot of time outside Dane County, thank God, uh, I can tell you um, that people where I live in Racine County, they're happy with what we did. Not universally. There are people who are still angry. There are still people who are upset. But by and large, every day that goes by, more and more of those people begin to say, you know, just like some people where you have to make a tough choice to go in and have surgery when you really don't want to, the initial pain is usually pretty intense. But you realize that the long-term gain from that short-term pain makes all the difference.